in July 1974, a shipment of Ford Corollas arrived at the port of Famagusta in Cyprus. Their destination? The underground garage of a car dealership in central Nicosia, the capital. In the days and weeks that followed their arrival, conflict erupted on the island of Cyprus as a Turkish military force descended and swept south, intent on capturing the capital city. The United Nations peacekeeping force that already resided on the island halted much of the Turkish advance. Although fighting continued between the Turkish and Greek Cypriot forces as they battled for vital ground at the international airport and at the port of Famagusta. Inside the ancient city walls of the capital, a de facto no man's land had already formed, based on an already established buffer zone, keeping the Turkish and Greek Cypriot communities apart due to decades of intercommunal violence. It was known as the Green Line. Four weeks passed as peace talks and UN resolutions failed to convince the protagonists to withdraw their troops. The result? A fragile ceasefire and an extension of the Green Line across the entire island, now 180 kilometres long. Those that had fled the battlegrounds between the sides now demanded to return to their homes or businesses to collect their treasured items. However, they were denied access to the buffer zone. No exception was made for the car dealership owner in Nicosia, whose garage now sat firmly inside No Man's Land. And there it has remained ever since, full of cars gathering dust. Some still have the original plastic seat covers on, and many only have 40 kilometres on the clock, the distance of their only journey made from Famagusta to Nicosia in July. 1974. Welcome to Cyprus Untold, the unbiased and unprecedented podcast taking you inside the last 50 years of the United Nations buffer zone. Your host is Samuel Lewis Blanc, production by Ceasefire Limited. Hoskelden, Kalia Theoris. Welcome to the inaugural episode of Cyprus Untold. I hope you enjoyed that introductory tale, as I will begin every episode with similar infamous stories from the Green Line. And if you want to follow along and see photographs that accompany each story as I tell them, follow me now at Cyprus Untold on Instagram and YouTube, where I will release extra content alongside each episode. In fact, If you go to Instagram right now, you will see the garage and the cars, as I described, time-locked for the last 50 years, looking like a scene from an apocalypse film, as much of the buffer zone also looks. But how did we get to this? 50 years later, still no viable resolution for the people of Cyprus. I believe to understand this, we need to look even further back to understand the historical context before we discuss the melee of contentious issues that face the UN on a daily basis. Now, I'm not aiming to examine the centuries-old disputes of claim to ownership of the island of Cyprus, and I'm not going to employ myself in trying to decongest every minute detail of the 20th century surrounding Cyprus and and the East Mediterranean. However, context is everything, and it is noteworthy that the island of Cyprus, as it still is today, has been at the epicentre of grand strategic empires for over 3,000 years. The Aegean Greeks, the Assyrians, the Persians, the Hellenic Greeks and the Egyptians, the Romans, the Byzantines, the Crusaders, the Louisians and the Venetians, they've all laid foundations on the island of Cyprus. 
be it for staging armies prior to onwards imperial conquest or as a logistical trading hub, Cyprus has always been a literal and symbolic fault line where East meets West. And by delving into that ancient and medieval history, you will discover many great tales of historical revenants. Examples that, that jump out and, and come to mind. Alexander the Great in 333 BC uh, freed the island of Cyprus from the Persians. Mark, Ant Mark Antony gave Cyprus to Cleopatra uh, during antiquity. Richard the Lionheart marrying his bride Berigina, Queen of England, in Limassol during the late 12th century. And um, who could forget Shakespeare's Othello um, is based in Cyprus, um, where the Venetian Republic of Cyprus is laid siege by the Ottomans. Um, this happens between 1570 and 1571, and that is really where the beginning of our exploration of this story begins. As a quick side note, if this rich history interests you, I cannot recommend enough that you visit Cyprus. This heritage is everywhere you go. There are Roman ruins to visit, medieval forts and castles, ancient abbeys, stunning monasteries, the museums are just meccas for those of you interested in Middle Eastern history. And somewhere that stands out um, for this would be St. Hilarion Castle. It overlooks Carinia, it's on the top of the uh, Pendidactylus mountain range. And on a really clear day, you can actually see mainland Turkey from it. The castle itself is a real hodgepodge of different eras built on top of one another. So it has something for everyone. And once you've finished at the castle, which I actually advise you start early in the day to avoid heat exhaustion, a short stop away is Belape Abbey or Kyrenia Castle, which is next to the harbour. There are so many options uh, all within a short distance of each other to explore. I also cannot go without mentioning the Venetian city walls of Nicosia. If you go online now and search for an aerial view of Nicosia, you cannot avoid noticing there's a perfect circular fortification in the centre and 11 bastions facing outwards uh, from that circular structure. Now, this area will feature heavily in later episodes of the podcast, as you may also notice from looking online or from viewing my buffer zone map on Instagram that the walls are split, um, half of them now controlled by the northern administration and the southern portion under control of the Republic of Cyprus. Arguably, in my opinion, the whole thing should be a world heritage site. Um, that aside, and to continue on the theme of experiencing Cyprus for yourself, you can also enjoy this amalgamation of all those great empires that have ruled Cyprus through its food. There is, of course, areas of the island that are more heavily influenced by either Turkish or Greek traditions, but on the whole, mine and my family's experience is that Cyprus has its own unique mashing together of cultural food experiences. On one hand, you have Lebanese hummus or Turkish inspired meat kebabs, not to be confused with your Friday night English takeaway style kebab. Um, and at the other end of the table, you'll find real halloumi, delicious fetters and the sweetest oranges or fresh lemonade. You, you just cannot be disappointed. Now, to avoid naming every recommendation, every restaurant recommendation I have, which could be an entire episode itself, I will post online uh, periodically my absolute favourites. But for those of you that cannot wait... I would firstly suggest Rue. Probably an awful pronunciation. Um, it's spelt R 
O U S. Uh, the menu here is entirely influenced by Cypriot history, and they have a men uh, set menu option where each course is based on cuisine of the different Cypriot era. It is a real treat and certainly a must if staying overnight in Nicosia. Do book in advance. Now, back to the actual history. I mentioned earlier the major powers that ruled Cyprus throughout the ages and where we left off at the latter of these historical periods, the Venetian Ottoman Wars. This is what bears particular importance for the beginnings of what predates the modern Cyprus problem. Following the annexation of Cyprus by the Ottomans in 1571, the Ottomans allowed Greek, the Greek Cypriot inhabitants to remain relatively unoppressed by Ottoman subjugation. In fact, across most of the Ottoman Empire, including in Cyprus, the Ottomans practiced a form of governance called the millet system. Uh, this allowed conquered communities to thrive as they were relatively accepting of religious and cultural differences. The majority of Greek Cypriots of Cyprus gained secular powers in areas such as judicial authority and tax collection. So the era of Ottoman rule was mostly peaceful and integration was commonplace. Many Greek Cypriots converted to Islam, as did members of the minority communities made up of Maronites, Armenians, Latins, likewise some Turkish settlers changed their Muslim faith to that of Cyprus's predominant faith, um, Greek Orthodox. This divided the ethnic boundaries through the following three centuries, as it, and this is really the foundation of cohabitation with Greek Cypriots. Um, that formalised, to an extent, the existence of the modern Turkish Cypriot who themselves now bear lineage with other Cypriots back to the earliest Assyrian and Persian conquerors. To say that it was all roses and harmony uh, during the Ottoman rule would be disingenuous, of course. However, contrary to Greek Cypriot folklore and some mid-20th century propaganda aimed at blaming Turkish Cypriots for beginning the divide between their communities, the initial schism between Greek and Turkish Cypriots in the early 1800s was not due to the Ottomans' maltreatment of Greek Cypriots in Cyprus at all. Emboldened by Greek revolution and the war of independence from the Ottomans in mainland Greece, which was successful by 1829, some Greek Cypriots began aspiring to unity with Greece an idea known as enosis. Now, do remember that phrase, unity with Greece, enosis. It will be a recurring theme in later episodes. Now, despite the murmurings of Greek Cypriot revolt in Cyprus, the Ottoman Empire maintained its grasp on the island until 1878, when administration of the island passed to none other than the British. And that is where we will pick up on our next episode, discovering the backdrop to our modern day Cyprus problem. My final message for this opening episode is something that is extant for the entire series. I am not here to side one way or the other. I am passionate about Cypriot history, Cypriot culture and the Cypriot people who I understand have the right to self-determination, be it a united island under one government or a bicommunal federation. Cyprus Untold is here to educate. It is about illuminating the absurd goings on inside the buffer zone over the past 50 years. I am unbiasedly documenting the truth and hopefully we can inspire a renewed effort towards a peaceful resolution for the island 
and the people of Cyprus. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to Cyprus Untold. If you would like any questions answered on the podcast, or you'd like to submit your supporting stories, photographs and memories of Cyprus throughout the ages, please message me direct on Instagram or YouTube at Cyprus Untold. Alternatively, send via email to info at ceasefire.world. Remember to like, subscribe and share wherever you get your podcast. For now, Oshikal and Dio. Goodbye.